looking at how to find peace within our chaotic society. Peace. Everywhere in the world, musicians are singing about peace. So many special organizations are talking about peace. And there are so many peace conferences going on everywhere in the world. But at the same time, we are seeing that no one is having that peace we are talking about. Why is that? Because people don't actually understand how to get that peace. As we were talking, the importance of Bhagavad And the Bhagavad is the direction that shows us the way to our self-interest. So Lokesan mentioned clearly in Bhagavad the process of becoming peaceful, getting peace. Bhagavad clearly mentioned it. So we can, we can understand that it is a fact that the Bhagavad has the solution to all the problems we have in this material. So if anyone is there interested in peace, we should try to understand the formula. The formula is clearly given in many places in Bhagavad Many places. So we start from the famous one, which is Lopapad, always used as a peace formula for the world. That is Bhagavad Gita 529, where Krishna is speaking. Bhaktaram Jagyatapasham Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suhudam Sarvabhutanam Gyatvamam Santim Vichati. Krishna is, uh, Lopapad said, this is peace formula. Is a formula for peace in this world. What is that? In this slogan, there are three things mentioned. What are the three things? That everyone must know that Lord Krishna is the supreme, ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities. This must be clearly understood. The Krishna is the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities. Two, Krishna is the supreme lord of all planets and demigods. He is the ultimate lord, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods. The whole planet including the demigod and everyone else. All. He is the Supreme Lord, the Master of all. And the last thing, and he is a benefactor and well wisher of all living entities. Here, Krishna didn't say to human beings, he said to all living entities, the embodied souls, all embodied souls are Krishna's parts and parcel. So he is our supreme well wisher. He's our supreme friend. In fact, if there is any meaning to this word, friend, it's only Krishna and his pure devotees. Any other person else who uses this word is a cheater. Only Krishna has the right and his pure devotees has the right to call someone their friend. Why? Because what was the meaning of a friend? A person who is there for you in all situations, in all circumstances, at all time. Can anyone say he is or she is like that? No. Death will separate us, even if we pretend to be for some time. If you don't disappoint each other in our relationship, death will take it. But Krishna and Krishna's pure devotees remain eternally our friends. In good times and in bad times. This is a friend. There's so many people who come close to us only when they are favorable material situations. 
when the situation are not favorable, you don't see them. Even those who are there, may, maybe philosophically or some circumstances may force us to close a person at a time of difficulty, but when you look deeply into our consciousness, what do we see? We may do these uh, activities with grudge. We may do it inconveniently. We may do it just because of pride, so people see that we are the two friends. So one can only say that Krishna and his true pure devotees are the true friends of the world. Therefore, if we want to get out of our complexities, we want to be peaceful in this material world, it is not intersex. It is not in alcohol. It is not in cigarettes. It is not in eating. It is not even in sleeping. It is not in defending. It is completely out of this. Therefore, peace is not absence of war. That is not. So Bhavad Gita, when we go to Bhavad Gita, just still in Bhavad Gita, we go to Bhavad Gita, chapter 2, we are in chapter 5, now we are going to chapter 2 of Bhavad Gita. Then you go to test 56, then we see what Krishna said. Krishna is saying that one who is not disturbed in mind, even amidst the truthful misery so elated when there is happiness, who is free from attachment, fear and anger is called a sage or steady mind. That is the only person who is peaceful in this world. He is the only person who is peaceful in this world. So peace is not absence of war. Peace is that we have recognized the supreme position of Lord Krishna. We have recognized his position as a beneficiary. He should be the enjoyer of all our activities, our austerities and sacrifices. And he is the true friend, the friend who will never for eternity disappoint us. When one recognizes this, and proper said, such a fully Christian conscious person is not at all disturbed, no disturbance, by the onslaught of the truthful miseries. For he accepts all miseries as the mercy of the Lord. This is the process of peace. Thinking himself only worthy of more trouble due to his past misdeeds, and he sees that his miseries, by the grace of the Lord, are minimized to the lowest. This is a person who will be peaceful in this world. No other person without this consciousness will be peaceful in this world. We should take it. A person who is not disturbed in the middle of difficulties. If one is happy when the situation is palatable, will be disturbed when the situation is not palatable, will not be peaceful. For one who is, who is peaceful is one who is in the middle, not one side. In the middle. In the same chapter 2, text 14, 15, Akesha is talking about a, a, a person who is suitable for liberation. Is one who is in the middle of difficulties and happiness, but he's peaceful. That person is qualified to be liberated. And here, in property speaking, the misery is, the truthful misery does not disturb a soul because now he you know, or he or she knows that the misery which I'm undergoing are due to my sinful activities. This is why we need to study Bhagavad Gita, to understand why we are suffering in this material world. So a person in Christian consciousness knows this. How does he know? From the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, which is given by a bona fide spiritual master. A bona fide spiritual master 
having compassion upon the student, disseminate knowledge. So we need a special master in all circumstances. We need to read Bhagavata every day, compulsorily, to have peace, that we can stay in the middle of miseries, will be peaceful. That is a peaceful person. Not a person who, who is free from difficulties. A person who is happy because there's no difficulties. What will happen when difficulties come? And as far as this material world, no one, no one can stay in this material world without having difficulties. No one. They are innumerable ups and downs. Innumerable. And everyone is helplessly going through all of them. So, how to become peaceful in this situation, how to attain peace is the process, is the knowledge, the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, which is given to us by Krishna, and the special master has to help to explain them. And by living his own perfect life that we can identify with. The philosophy has to be backed up with practical activities, practical demonstration. Then the message will go down and take a root and make us successful in what we practice. So Prabhupada is explaining very carefully, we should understand. Similarly, when he is happy, he gives credit to the Lord, thinking himself only worthy of more trouble due to his past misdeeds. And he sees that his miseries, by the grace of the Lord, are minimized to the lowest to the lowest. Similarly, when he is happy, he gives credit to the Lord, thinking himself unworthy of the happiness. He realizes that it is due only to the Lord's grace that he is in such a comfortable condition and able to render better service to the Lord. And he, a devotee is thinking, this situation is given to me by the mercy of the Lord for his service. Because if we look very carefully, there are many people who have the same qualifications we have that have no job. Or even have the better qualifications than what we have that have no job. And we have a job. What do we, what do we attribute that to? There are many people there, in there, out there, who have better qualifications than what we have. But they have no job, and we have a job. What is the reason to that? There are, there are many people there who have all the facilities we have, or even have a better facilities that we have, who are more miserable than us. What is responsible for that? They have better facilities for sense gratification more than what we have. They are more miserable than us. What is responsible for that? We should try to understand. These are the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. These are the mercy of the special master to reveal this knowledge. So, there's a need to have a special master. There's a need to study the Bhagavad Gita. If we want peace, if we want peace. There are millions of people there who does not have Oh, who have better health than what we have. And they are more miserable. There are millions of people. Like that. They have better health. They are younger than us. But the frustration they are undergoing is more than what we have. What is responsible for that? We need the teachings of our Gita. So the devotee consider my sufferings are minimized by the mercy of the Lord. Because I'm, I'm trying to surrender my life to Krishna. I'm trying to give my life to Krishna. And Krishna is so merciful that although I'm trying, I'm not perfect yet, I'm trying. Still, Krishna is so merciful 
that he's given me all, he has minimized my, my suffering. Because he considers me one of his helpless child. So he minimizes. And also now, I have a better facility. Now it is also his costless mercy, not unqualified. Because I'm making an attempt. Because I'm very kind. That is helping me with the facility. So, so I can... I can see that it is true, the Lord is merciful, because if one undergoes punishment, 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 for suffering, 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 it is difficult for conditioned souls to see God in that. So Krishna is balancing the situation so we can, we can appreciate him and be encouraged to continue. So Krishna is giving a facility for his service. And for the service of the Lord, he is always daring and active and is not influenced by attachment or aversion. Attachment means accepting things for one's own sense gratification. And detachment is the absence of such sensual attachment. But one fixed in Christian consciousness has neither attachment nor detachment because his life is dedicated in the service of the Lord. Consequently, he is not at all angry when, even when his attempts are unsuccessful. Success or not success, a Christian conscious person is always steady in his determination. The process for, for peace we are looking at. We are looking at the process for peace. If we want peace, these are the formula. These are the principles for anyone at all who is there, very, very fortunate to become peaceful in this material world. Other than this, we, we have no other processes of becoming peaceful in this world. Because even the highest person in this material world, Lord Brahma, how peaceful is him. Everyone in this material world. And let us see. So Brahma did not go to the mundane school which we have. So Brahma does not have the hospitals or the, the medicine which we have. He, he, he in the better, thousands and thousands of times better situation than any one of us. But how happy is Lord Brahma? How happy is he? So our situation should be clearly understood by the means of his special master and studying Bhagavad So we can know what exactly peace is and how to get this peace. We are repeating, it is not the absence of, of war. So we look at, still look at Bhagavad Gita 66, the same, the same chapter 66. Location is still speaking to us. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can never, can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind. Without the quit, there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? The Christian is speaking. One will never have transcendental intelligence no peace if we don't make friendship with Krishna. So the, the word Nasta Buddha Yuktasya, Ayuktasya means Ayukta, we are not connected with Krishna. So for anyone who wants to be peaceful in this world, even in the middle of the truthful miseries to remain happy and not be disturbed by anything, we need to establish our eternal connection with the Supreme Person of God, Krishna. This is the solution. This is the formula. We must establish our connection with the Supreme. Without which, Krishna is saying, there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? If there is no peace, no one can be happy. For anyone to be happy, we need peace. And to be peaceful and happy, we need to establish connection with Krishna. Nasti buddhiri ayuktasya na chasya na chayuktasya bhavana. Bhavana. 
na cha baba yanta santiri asanta sha kuta sukam asanta sha kuta sukam where where is the possibility of peace without happiness it is not possible so proper said devo it if one is not in christian consciousness there cannot be final goal of mind disturbance is due to want of an ultimate goal and when one is certain that krishna is the enjoyer proprietor and friend of everyone and everything then he can with a steady mind bring about peace is the formula therefore one who is engaged without relationship with krishna is certainly always in distress and is without peace however much he may make a show of peace and spiritual advancement in life krishna consciousness is a self manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in relationship with krishna proper is empathic in this world and uh, one who is engaged without a relationship with krishna is certainly always in <laughs> distress <laughs> proper is very very careful in presenting his word he is certainly always in distress that means that one can pretend that which is happening everywhere they say show sure of peace or happiness everywhere so to show someone one state is not peaceful is not peace is not happiness after that the next minute what happened no oh, misery comes for well, people who are peaceful nothing can disturb them that is a person in christian consciousness that a person in christian consciousness has fully established his or her connection with krishna that nothing else can be misery for him or for her so proper is selecting his word hmm? he is certainly always in distress and is without peace how however much he may make a show of peace and spiritual advancement in life krishna consciousness is a self manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in relationship with krishna so if we want to be peaceful we must establish our connection with krishna our relationship with krishna must be established so we have this uh, teaching from bhagavad gita here and if you go to and 70 and 71 krishna continued to explain a person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean which is ever being filled but is always stilled can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires a person who is trying to satisfy all these innumerable desires material desires in the heart can never be peaceful never the person who overlook them because he is full in christian consciousness will be peaceful and to conclude a person who has given up all desire for sense gratification who lives free from desires who has given up all sense of proprietorship and is devoid of false ego he alone can attain real peace he alone can attain real peace others cannot we cannot buy it in the market even if you have the money if for those of those of those of us who think that money can buy happiness it is true you can get the money but where is the market to buy it if you have the market first before you can buy if you have no market where will you buy you may have the money if there's no market where will you buy so even even if one think that yeah money money will give me happiness it is true look for the money but before you look for the money look for the market where you buy the peace you cannot find it therefore it is only in krishna consciousness thank you very much